back from the warm tropics, so I thought I'd get some things done on the truck. I can't do painting or body work. It's just way too cold in the garage, and the humidity is up because it's been raining and snowing and everything else outside. So instead of continuing with the body work on the fenders, which is what I was doing, I'm taking care of all the little things, and I'm painting little parts that I can get away with, set a heater right in front of them, warm them up, paint them, be done with them. And uh, I'm taking care of some things. I'm getting the wipers uh, done. They're on, actually, I got some motors on order. The two vacuum ones I had were no good. They won't work. So that's on order. And one of the other little things I got to take care of is my gas uh, sender units. The sender units that here are universal. And I'm, I followed directions, measured the tank depth, and uh, adjusted the arm length. But right now it's showing there's still fuel in it when it's empty. And when it's full, it's showing it's not quite full. So that tells me that the arm is a little too long. It's hitting the bottom of the tank before it gets all the way down. And it's hitting the top of the tank before it comes all the way up. So I'm going to pull it out and shorten it. It's just a real easy thing to do. But uh, you can do it to your gas uh, sender unit if it's reading incorrectly for your gauge. Now there is different uh, ohms for the gauges. So Ford, Chevy, Dodge, they all use a certain ohm sender for their gauge. And if you have the wrong ohm or the wrong sender, wrong gauge, if they don't match is what I'm trying to say is, it won't read right anyway. So make sure your ohms match from your sender to your gauge. And then if it doesn't work, you can shorten or lengthen your arm to fine tune it. And so that's what we're doing here. So watch along. Make sure your battery isn't done because you're playing with electric and you're playing with gas. Uh, those two don't don't mix very well. And whenever you're doing anything, wear safety glasses. Unless you can't see nothing. Mine actually have readers in them. Because I need readers. Plus, it makes things a lot clearer when I'm up close. So that's my sender wire. Don't lose that. Lock nut and washer on it. Sounds like a fart. By the way, I went to Belize. The average daily temperature is 80 something degrees there. What a shock to come back to, you know, single digits. In fact, it was so bad coming back, our flight got canceled from Seattle. Because we couldn't land here in Pasco, where am I? I'm at. It was too foggy. So we spent an extra night we didn't want to in Seattle. And of course, because it was weather, you didn't get your flight reimbursed or your, your, your motel stay. I mean, your flight, they just moved it to another time frame during the day, the next day. All right, here it comes. There she be. So here, here's the the float and the uh, sender unit, and it's just hitting the bottom before it comes all the way down. You see that? Same with when it goes up, it gets to the top before it's all the way there. So all we have to do is shorten this rod, and it's really easy because there's a set screw right there. So let me grab a screwdriver. Went off screen on you there. Now, I, I, can you see that really close? There's a black mark right there, a mark slot. That's a, a mark I used to, to know where I needed it set. Computer is too fat.
better. And I'm just going to move it no more than an eighth of an inch, probably. That should do it. And I got Loctite on it, too. That's great. If it was just reading, uh, like I had fuel in it when it was empty, but reading okay when it's full, that would be a little bit different adjustment. Wow, okay. I'm gonna put in a vise. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Hey, I want to show you something. I had red Loctite on that little set screw right there. And it was starting to strip. I don't know if you can see it when I was using my screwdriver because I couldn't, I couldn't turn it. Red Loct Loctite did what it's supposed to do, locked it in place. But there is a fix. If you have red Loct Loctite on something that you can't break loose, Heat it up. I use my little butane torch here, put it right on there. Of course, this is a, had gas, so we, we gotta be careful. Heated it up, saw the red Loctite change uh, composition from solids. And then I was able to turn the screw. So that's gonna allow me to adjust the rod. And I find my marks. There we are. All right, we're going to go just a little further than we were. And I'm going to put new red Loctite on it. Once again, this is right where I want it. been moved about one eighth of an inch. Uh, yeah. Real close to that. Maybe not quite that. Let's move just a little bit more. And make sure your make sure your float you know is, is level with everything. You don't want it. You don't want it pointing down or up. It's because that certainly won't uh, work out well for you. Tighten that thing back up. Put your lid on your Loctite because it will dry out. Make sure everything is in there proper. Gaskets are clean. Surface is clean. Line them all up.
You might think that all the holes in the gaskets would line up in any position, but they don't. You gotta spin it around until you find a spot that you like, where they all line up well. Now on this side, I didn't use any silicone sealer. I'm just counting on the gasket. And we'll see if it leaks. On the other side, I did use silicone sealer. Some screws in there. When you're working with something like this, start all the screws before you tighten any of them down. That way they'll all actually go in. It's kind of a curved surface. If you put one side, you know, start some in, one in and tighten it down, and then try to get the rest of them, that ain't happening. I got one slightly stubborn. Wiggle it around a little bit. See what happens. It's kind of sort of going down. I'm still running it down with the impact because I'm not sure about its uh, integrity. We'll put it down by hand here with the wrench. And it's going down fine. So, that's good news. Just put them all down by fingers. And that should do it for this side. And then I have the exact tank on the other side. Well, not exact. It's not a uh, hot brewing. It's a or seas burning. I think it's uh, I don't remember. I can't see it, but it's blue. But that's about it for today. Um, let's see. I did put my my dash plaque for the two-speed rear end back on the dash just because I like it. It's kind of cool, old, nostalgic, whatever. Of course, there's not a two-speed rear end in here anymore. It's a it's a Sterling ten and a half from a Ford Super Duty. And the front's also from a Ford Super Duty. I was told it was a Dana 60 when I bought it, and I didn't look at the numbers like an idiot. I didn't even check it out. I just said, yeah, I'll take it. Mostly because it had 456 gears, just like the back. And that's what we wanted in this ride. Since we got such tall tires and we got an overdrive tranny, we can get away with that. But it is a Dana 50. Which came in Super Duties in the early 2000s. I think like 1990s, early 2000s. That should do it for that. Let's get the sender on. So now, your Dana 50 is not a bad rear end. It's just got a smaller ring gear. And smaller axles where they go into the carrier than the Dana 60. And what does that mean? It means it's weaker, but not a great deal weaker. I mean, it's it's stronger than a Dana 40. Stronger than a lot of rear ends, stronger than most Chevys. Uh, not the 14 bolt, of course, but um, but it's a decent rear end, and they actually do make a kit that uh, allows you to put in the larger bearings in the carrier and. Uh, allows you to use the larger axle shafts and uh, and then it's just as good as anything else out there so that's it for this gas tank 
and uh, thanks for coming back to my garage, and we'll see you on the next project. Get out there and work on your stuff. <laughs>